people are often surprised, because I, you know, obviously I give talks about writing and stuff like that, and people are often surprised about how little, um, you know, forward thinking ever goes into my book. There's no real planning involved at all. I just start writing. And, and I think the reason for that is that basically I'm sort of lazy, I think. And, and I just have an idea, my narrative dare, and I'm sure you've heard me talk about that, I just have a narrative dare and then start working with it. And the interesting thing about that is that I, I don't know where it's going to turn out. And if you're reading my books and you've got no idea where it's going, then, then don't worry, because neither did I. Uh, I had absolutely no idea. But I think the interesting thing about um, whatever genre it is I write in, and we're still not decided what it is, whether it's uh, speculative fiction, or fantasy, or absurdist, or whatever it is. I mean, you know, try and categorize the air affair. I don't know where quite that goes. Or even, um, even the early riser, sci-fi, I think, probably, climate. Climate fiction, cli fi as it's called. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know about that either, but it is a thing, apparently. Um, I think it's the, along the journey of writing, because I, the first thing I did when I was writing Early Riser was pretty much write the world. And the world then created the dramatic possibilities. Right? So there was no real plot to begin with. The plot very much comes after the world is kind of half, in, um, half you know, created. Um, the, the obvious one to think about is, I suppose, in Shades of Grey, with the spoons. Right? Now, the whole spoon sub subplot only exists because that's the world in which you can exist in. So the subplot actually comes on the back of creating the world. So making it up as one goes along is, of course, you know, I think the ideal way to do it, because then these new dramatic possibilities all start you know, popping to the fore, which I think, I think works, uh, works pretty well. Um, if I'm in trouble, I just start the book on a train um, I can reveal that, actually, now. Um, and you're thinking now, how many books has he started? It's three. <laughs> um, well, Early Riser begins on a train, doesn't it? Uh, Shades of Grey kind of begins on a train, doesn't it? And one of the Thursday books, I think, maybe first one sequels, I think it is, that begins on a train as well. And it's really good, and if there are any writers here, I'm sure there are, there always are, um, it's a really good way to start the story, because you've got maybe two or three characters, and they have come from somewhere, but it's not revealed yet, but it's relevant, and it shall be revealed in the future in the, you know, as, as the book progresses. They're going to somewhere, and the reason that they are doing that, of course, then also can be revealed, but is as yet a question mark. And you can have random conversations with strangers to reveal the world about you. And you can look out the window, and you can describe what moves past. And all these things, you can sneak past the reader without sort of info dumping or expeditional vomiting or whatever it is uh, we have to do as fantasy authors try and create a new world in as little pages as possible uh, you know without the dear reader noticing that what I'm up to. So yeah, starting on a train works pretty well for me anyway.